100 days of don't starve together but single player this game is difficult it's really fast paced so planning ahead is an absolute must because everything in this world wants to kill you the creatures want to kill you the seasons want to kill you things that you pick up want to kill you if you like this video musketeers let me know by hitting that like button and sharing it with another musketeer one for all and all for one day one i emerged from this portal from nowhere onto wait where the hell am i no time to stop and think this game is called don't starve and i need to find some food okay i found some berries i think i'm good gotta get myself some twigs and look some nice looking turf with mechanical beings on it I'm going to ignore that and get some grass instead. Grass and twigs, mate. I need these to make a torch for later, when the night time comes. I found a carrot and also what may be an entrance into a cave, which I can explore later. I'll take note. Looks like I'm not alone on this plane of existence. Oh, that looks brutal. After making an axe, I chop down my first tree as I'll need wood for things later. Before that, I do spy a bunch of beefalo across the river here. These guys are paramount to my survival in the next season, which will be winter. Now I have a look at my map and see these are the areas I've explored thus far. I find some flint, which is also a base resource to make myself a fire pit later. I see a touchstone over here and I can use this to resurrect when I die. But we know the rules here. You die, it's over. Oh look, it's turning dusk on my first day already, as shown by the dusky look of the game and also the time of day needle. I follow a path for a bit and find myself a biome with lots of rocks that have gold within them. This is good news, I do need gold for some required machines. Like this thing, a science machine. I make it and I'll place it down soon. Oh no, the needle is moving into the dark blue section. It's night time now and the screen goes completely black. This is why I needed torches, because without light, you get attacked, quite literally. I guess I'll keep running around and exploring in the dark while using my minimap. The dawn of the second day, and my map is filling up a bit more. I know where to go to look for gold now. I also locate a bunch of gravestones. This is an important landmark for some grave robbing later, so stay tuned. At least I share my home with a nice tall bird, no, not that type of bird. I can see here that I have 19 days left of autumn, so there are some things I must do before the season changes. It's the next morning and I find a wormhole. Well, the only sane thing to do is jump through and see where it leads me. But before that, I make my science machine and craft some stuff. A shovel, a hammer, a backpack for some more space, a spare for offense. I even make some refined items to save inventory space. I then break down my own machine because I can always make another one later. And into the wormhole and it takes me north. Excellent, I'm closer to those beefalo now. I also find something interesting. Here is another thingy and ooh, we got stuff here. Um, Interesting, there's beefalo stuff here and everything. I then find myself among these beefalo. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm so happy. Ooh, look at this, an unfortunate survivor. Better them than me. As night comes, I start to dig up grass saplings because I will start looking for a base location and replanting these to bring the resources to me. That fight from before is over, so like a vulture, I take some goodies. Mm, mm, no, no, no. <laughs> Don't hurt me. I make my escape and even more discoveries are made. See where it goes. Oh, that is not good. Oh my god. Where am I? Okay, oh my god. Uh, so we're here, okay. Interesting, my god, that is so many bees. <gasps> oh my god. Of course, the next thing I do is piss off all the bees. Now, in this house is a pig. I think he should come outside. The next day, and I see this little mole worm. I dig him up, release him, and let my little computer scan him. You'll see why soon enough. Another wormhole later, and it leads me into a dangerous swamp. Like this, for example. It's a huge reed spawn thing. You'll see why this is dangerous shortly. Oh look, a doggy bone! And I find Chester, which is a little mobile chest for storing all my goodies. And at the edge of the swamp biome. Mm -hmm. Ooh, ooh, what's this I see? What is this I see? <gasps> okay, I think this is it. It's the future biome for my base location, the Oasis. 
I just have to find it. Also, my curiosity got the better of me here. Wait, are these two connected? Oh, no way. Okay, I need to quickly check something out. This Is this a thing? Are there... Yep. Oh, my God. Okay. I can, um... I can definitely see what that is. <laughs> okay, my mate told me about that, and now I understand. Oh my god, that is insane. By the end of day four, I find my future base location, which will be around this suspicious looking empty pond. I might start setting up my base, seeing as I got destroyed by my own curiosity. So as well as grass, I also dig up twigs for my base as well. Oh mate, he sounds so optimistic. If we have a look here, so. This is where I'm going to put my future base location. We have a reed thing right there. That is amazing. The beefalo are just there. So that's where all the beefalo are. There's a lot of honey right here. I like it. This is an amazing server. This is utterly amazing. The very first attempt at this 100 days and I'm actually really excited for what this uh, little world has in store for me. Day 5, and I make a nasty discovery. Maybe I can use these spiders to my advantage. That's a problem for later. I go ahead and chop down all these trees to make room for my base. So, all the trees are gone, and the first thing a base needs is a campfire. A new science machine, an alchemy machine, oh by the way, you make these things so it gives you access to new blueprints you can craft. I plant one tree close to my campfire, so if it rains, my electric robot guy can have some kind of cover near a campfire. Also, my excitement here is amazing in the field. Oh, yes, boy. <laughs> Ever seen a man so excited about making a fire? Well, maybe Tom Hanks. I created fire! Me! <laughs> Alright, let's do this. Let's make ourselves a little uh, tree farm just for extra wood so I can cut this down. Just as day 6 greets me, I make a chest to store some stuff. I then go ahead and make a razor, and I wanted to make a bug net, but spider silk. Okay, that's next then. Before that, I place down all these resources I've been digging up. I then make some armor because I'll be heading into danger. So my mission here is to cause a fight between these spiders and gear horses. The thing is, they're more interested in me it seems. Okay, finally, they are killing each other, so I'm gonna get in on the loot. Well, I need both gears and these silks, so that's a win. While I watch, I heal myself with spider glands and see that the horses have lost this war. These spiders will be a problem for me. Here's a new problem. Rain. This is my strategy. Fire makes me dry, and a tree protects me from the rain, for the most part. Also, let's add a new problem. Hound wave. Come on, Rain, I need you to stop, my friend. Please, please, please stop. This guy gets damaged by rain. I do have lots of gears on me, which is actually really good. That's really good. Okay, here we go. Here he is. Okay. Okay, all problems are resolved and it's also day seven. I get round to making my bug net next. I'll use the bug net tonight, so while I wait, I dig up berry bushes to replant back at home. Before the night time, I know that I need charcoal, so I indulge my pyromania and burn down some trees. This night, I didn't get to use my bug net, because I didn't find any fireflies. Day 8, I dig up a mole worm again, because this is also important. While I wait for the next night, I plant my grass saplings. Now those twigs from before, they will grow. These guys won't grow yet because I need to fertilize them with manure, which I'll touch on shortly. The same deal applies to these berry bushes. The night is here and I see fireflies, which I catch. And I go ahead and make myself a certain plugin for night vision. Yeah, this playable character has some crazy buffs. I have taken away the main hindrance in the game, which is darkness. No longer a problem. Day 9 and I start a little food hub. I make some crockpots first because this is what you use to combine food into better meals. After asking Chester politely to move. Chester, can you f move my friend? Okay, pots are down and I put a fridge right in the middle here to keep food from spoiling. In fact, I use some nasty spider meat, also known as monster meat, and berries to make some meatballs. 
It's a good food source. So it's the next morning and I take Chester for a walk towards the beefalo. So I'll be spending some time cleaning up after these guys and collecting the poop. This is my fertilizer, so I'll be doing this for quite a bit because I need a lot. I also collect more grass at the same time. So I walk into this thing. I don't trust that chest. So I collect all the other stuff in here, but not the chest. I think I did that years ago and something bad happened. Anyways, my watch continues. That night with my new night vision, I'm able to keep working in the darkness. It's so broken and I love it. Day 11 and I fill Chester with all my resources and continue my watch because I need a lot of manure for all of this. This night, which is also a full moon, the beefalo make a mistake of sleeping while I'm around. I use my razor and I shave all of them. What? I need fur. And as the sun rises. So these guys have no idea what happened to them. It's like when you take a pen to your friend's face when he's sleeping. Did I ever do that? Uh, no, I don't actually think I ever did that. Did I shave a beefalo in his sleep? Oh, look at that. They're all so unhappy. <laughs> what happened, I wonder? <laughs> That's amazing. I love it. So I also decide it's time to do something questionable. Oh, he looks so sad. I feed him a little bit and he follows me. I hit him four times, dodge him, and hit him four times again. For the most part, combat works like this. You attack a creature and dodge its attack. All creatures have different attack reactions. I kill this guy because other than fur, I also need something else. Which I don't get. Damn, what a waste. At base, I plant all of my berry saplings and fertilize all of them. As I plant more twigs, these are also ready to go, so that's how you bring resources to you. I also fertilize all my grass now. This night, I make my first hand bat, which is an excellent weapon, just in time for the next day. It's day 13, and I quickly dispense with another hound wave. This is something that happens in the game every so often, to keep you on your toes and the hounds become more numerous. This time, I had to kill three as opposed to one last time. But hey, I can make meatballs with this source of meat. The next day, and I'm in this forest looking biome, and I destroy more pig houses. When you destroy a building, it gives you half the resources to make one of your own. Well, the pig doesn't mind, see? He's busy. So I do some more exploring because I'm looking for something, or someone. The pig king will come in handy later. It's the next day, and I jump through this wormhole, and it literally takes me across the water. Playing on a medium server is kind of nice. I also find something appreciated. We can check out what's... Oh, here we go. Walrus camp. Fantastic. So there is... A walrus camp right there. That is very good to know. Okay. Walrus camp 1. This walrus camp will be useful to me in winter. I know where it is now, so that's all that matters for the time being. After more exploring, and I find something dangerous. Oh, here is uh, the dragonfly location. Okay. Good to know. This dragonfly collection is where we have to fight a boss in the future. This dragonfly is a world boss, so it'll be some time before I attempt to take him down. At the end of this day, I had explored quite a bit, so knowledge is power. Day 16, and I make a second attempt at the item I need from this beef flow. Nope, that's another waste of a poop machine. A uh, third time's a charm? Mm -mm -mm -mm. So, beef flow number four. And finally, we got it. We got the thing that we desperately needed. <laughs> Oh no, I've, oh, I am genuinely ashamed of myself. Well, it's RNG. It depends on, you know, when it drops, but... Okay, there's still 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There's still 7 beefalo here, but I really didn't want to kill... What's that, 3 beefalo? I killed 3 beefalo for my own selfish greed. Mate, it was actually 4 in total. Hey, look, my berry bushes have grown. That's how you make your own food source. So yes, this horn is used to make a beefalo hat, something very important to keep warm in winter. During the night, I gather all my resources at base, because during winter, this stuff won't grow anymore. Day 17, I was disappointed that my mod for placement had wronged me. Look at these twig placements, it's appalling! I go to this thinned out herd for more manure, and with this manure, I fertilize what may be the last berries before winter. That's a lot of food at least. It's the next morning. Now, I've made a beefalo hat, but I also need thermal stones to help keep me warm during winter. 
I destroy this small wood farm before I go collecting these little thorny bushes that hurt you when you pick them up. Oh, no, 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 no. I dig them up, and they will be my fuel for winter. Next, I shed the bricks. spiders are just out in force. <gasps> Holy shit, man. That is... Oh, God. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think this may have... I think that's effectively cut off that area. I can't go there at all. I collect more gold this night. Day 19, and I see that many glaciers are starting to form. I get some ice from this, and you'll see why this is important soon. I want drying racks at home. But I need charcoal for that, so I indulge my pyromania again. Burn, baby, burn. Disco and burn, oh. Also, I had a thought. I'm actually thinking... I am not a fan of all these spiders here. I'm actually thinking maybe I can use deer clops to take out all those spiders. Or to cull them a little bit. Because that is way too many spiders. I am not a fan of that. Fun fact, I changed my mind because the item that deer clops drops will just be eaten by the spiders. I can't risk that. I need his eye. So it's the morning, and also 16 thorny twig saplings. It should be enough fuel for winter. I also craft my first pig house from stolen materials. I then make a little fenced off area before being rudely interrupted by the weather. Okay, sweet. So, can I get in here? <gasps> okay, sweet, 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 sweet. Run, run, run. Uh, we need to... Yep, 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 yep. Health is going down. That's it. It's become winter. Oh, there we go. Oh, welcome to winter conditions. So, the first of winter. This tiny little pen is done, and inside of it, I drop a single pig skin. I then place down my first pig house. Ah, there he is. Hey, piggy, how you going? So naturally, these pigs I placed down here will be distracted by easy food in the pen, and they will be stuck like this in an infinite loop. How do you make use of this? You'll find out in about 10 days. This many pigs is enough. And that night? There we go. Here comes the first snow. So day 22, and I have another hound wave. I think I'll make use of this massive bee field next to my base. There is ice hounds here as well, so when they die, they have a chance to freeze everything around them. All the bees are enough to kill the hounds though. When that's done, I open this suspicious looking boulder to create an entrance to the caves, which I'll go in soon. Back at base, I make an additional fridge because I plan to fill this thing up soon. I also start making some drying racks because dried meat is an excellent source for hunger, sanity, and health. Plus, it lasts very long. Day 23, and I finally make myself some gold tools because the durability on these is much better. Speaking of durability, see this thermal stone? Usually, it has a durability as well, but I'm using a mod to get rid of that function because I wanted to. Next, I run north. And I see the beefalo are in mating season. I can't approach them anymore, so no more manure for now. You can tell because of their red bums. As I run north, I need silk. This lone spider den may prove an easy target. I fight the spiders well into the next morning and warm my brittle gears near a self-made fire. I go in for the final kill. That's good. That's but... very good news. Oh my god, dude. Oh. Tank all this. Oh, I finally destroy it and get some silk and my own spider nest, which I can plant at base. The next day, I'm at this walrus camp and I see this walrus and his entourage, which I quickly deal with. I then chase down the main guy and collect my rewards. Yes, come on, do you have your chamber shanter? Yes, yes, boy, yes, boy. That's amazing. Okay, let's give myself some health. Now, I'm excited for this headpiece because it acts as a warm hat and also slowly gives you sanity. It's an amazing item. This guy can drop something else, but not today. On the way home, I do some grave digging for trinkets and also specifically blue gems. Trinkets for the pig king and gems for me. The next day and the trinkets I found are loved by the pig king, so much that he gives me gold for them. On the way home, I start collecting ice. I plant some more trees using a mod that queues up tasks, 
only to have Chester ruin the placement. Chester, you ruined the thing, Chester. I then make a chest full of defensive gear because there is a boss that comes for me in a few days. I make a sewing kit with the silk because all your clothing items eventually break and we can't have that. Day 28 and I'm watching these spiders fight these tentacles. I really need them to win because I want a tentacle spike that can drop from them because it's a weapon. They lost and I suck at killing these guys. <laughs> no luck. I release these fishmen but they are more interested in me than the tentacles. Ah, still no luck. Maybe I'll succeed in the caves. Down below are these bunny men. They're like pigs but if you have any kind of edible meat on you, they hate you. Uh, that's unique, seeing as they don't give a damn when I destroy their homes. God, how magical does this place look? I'm still fairly new to the caves. The next day, I start setting up a new pen because I'm also going to have bunny men, but for a different reason. I don't know the building layout, so I make the fence as I go. Instead of doing the food trick here, I will actually make a full enclosure. During the night, I'm interrupted again by hounds, but I can use these bunny men as bodyguards. By day 30, I had these guys almost enclosed. So, it's the night of day 30. I need to be prepared because something is coming for me. Do you hear that? It's Deer Clops. I can use this death trap to my advantage. I prepare a campfire to keep me warm, and I wait. <laughs> well, that's him right there. He spawned right in the middle of that trap. Oh my god, that's such a quick way to kill him! Okay, so he's dead. In the morning, I collect the spoils. Especially the eye while trying to dodge the trap myself. That's one of the world bosses that show up and it was just really lucky I had this trap I could utilize. Usually, you have to go head to head with him. Also, remember these pigs? This is the purpose of their existence. On full moons, they transform into were pigs. They still only care about the unobtainable food in the middle, so I can kill them for the most part and get all their loot. Meat for food and pig skins for making more helmets. Okay, day 32 and I have this pen enclosed with five bunny men. I'm almost happy with that. I then craft an eyebrella because it'll be spring soon and it's always raining in spring. My guy is mechanical so if I don't have this, I'll die very quickly. Anyways, I want one more bunny man, but I'm not having any luck finding any more homes. I do find a lot of grass and twigs down here, um, which is nice I guess? As it is close to spring, the upper world starts to warm up and it starts to drip water inside the cage so I need to run out quickly. Day 33, I follow this big rock section and I collect as much ice while I can. And by day 34, I have over 160, which will be useful. You can use ice as a filler to make meatballs, somehow. Also, during springtime, lightning will be a thing, so I make lightning rods for my base to prevent unwanted damage. So, the next day, I didn't build the extra bunny man hutch. That's okay, I think. I'll place down this spider den in the middle. Five bunnies should be able to handle this. At night, both come out and fight each other, and in the day, I collect the spoils. So this is a silk farm and a meat farm. In preparation for spring, I go ahead and explore more of the map. I'm looking for gravestones specifically and those blue gems. They are a must for summer. Day 36. It's the first of spring. I do some spring cleaning and clean up this messy pig house. He doesn't mind. It also starts to rain, surprisingly, so this umbrella is a must for me in the previous season. Without it, I die. Yeah, listen to that heavy rain. Boinky, 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 boinky. Also, lightning happened. Us, oh, luckily, I made lightning rods. That is genuinely helpful. <laughs> day 37. See, so then during the daytime, I just come and collect the spoils. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. I explore into unwelcome territory next. Can you, like, not? Jesus Christ, these guys hurt. Can you not, mate? 
Christ almighty, hits you like a f truck. While exploring, I find tumbleweeds and one of them has a blueprint. Ooh, morning star, morning star blueprint. Really? Good lord, that's amazing. <gasps> so, morning light for a nighttime fight. Nice. I find a lot of hounds the next morning. I then find another world boss and no idea how to fight this guy, so I'm going to avoid him. I find the last of the gravestones among these spiders and I don't have the amount of blue gems I need, so I do need to go into the caves for the rest of them. As for the rest, I give it to the pig king for easy gold. I have a look at my map and yeah, no more graves to dig. Also here's some logic, I'm drying meat in the rain and using ice with some meat to make meatballs. <laughs> easy food source. Day 40, as it's spring now, everything grows again and very quickly, which is good, I ran out of these resources before, but I'm interrupted though, by frog rain. I have to run away from my base, I can't stop because the frogs will beat me up. I finally return home unmolested by frogs. Day 41 starts with a misclick. Don't eat it, you with plenty of food, I go into the caves looking for blue gems. I come to this ominous looking place. It looks like an old civilization. I mine some of the stuff and get thulacite and a moon rock. Now I know thulacite is used to make good gear, but I have no idea about the moon rock. I then see something big and it's moving. I don't know enough about this, I flee like a little coward. There won't be blue gems here, I hope. Day 42, and the earth starts to destabilize. There's a staircase and I run up. It takes me to the northern part of the map. Okay, fair enough. I find another cave entrance and decide to enter the earth through this one. Okay, I'm here, I zoom out and oh my god, this place is huge. I'm here looking for stalagmites because I've been told you mine them for blue gems. I've never seen them before actually, so lots of exploring. So we're gonna have to explore every nook and cray. Oh, well, this nook has been explored. <laughs> Did you think I found it? I come out of one more entrance, take a quick look around, and dive back in. Ow! <laughs> Fucker took a bite out of my ass as I jumped in. <laughs> Day 43, I find monkeys. And later, I finally find the stalagmites. And more spiders but I finally get one blue gem. And by the middle of day 45, yes, day 45, <laughs> I finally get the five blue gems I need. That took forever. And so much gold I can't pick up down here. I make it home and I make a nasty discovery. Yeah, look at that. Oh shit. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Oh no, <laughs> I messed up, I messed up, okay, okay, that is, that is very bad, okay, fair enough, mm, yeah, all my bunny men died, and those spiders will run amok, so day 46, I gift some nasty meat to these pigs and ask for their assistance, yeah, we need to uproot this thing before it becomes a problem, an epic confrontation occurs, Do have gears that we can eat, but we'll eat these gears now. This has to be sorted now. Oh, 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 Papa Helmet. I know we're gonna take a bit of damage from rain, but we have to get that sorted. And with that, I take this nest away. I sadly decide to break down most of the bunny men houses. It's unfortunate because it's hard to get the resources for them. The fence is fixed, but I need to sort out my broken food supply now. Just as day 47 dawns, I've broken down four of the bunny man houses. I then apply the same thought and put two of the houses close to a cave entrance, so the bunny man can easily kill these bats every night, and that can be a food source for me. But I slowly need to expand these bunny man houses again. I get them to kill each other, 
but I barely get the resources I need to make even a dent in this 8 bunny men hatch. Day 48, I gathered some resources for the future, and I also need to start thinking about the next world boss in summer, called Antlion. I also watch a film about bunny men and bats having a grand time. The bunny men win this conflict. Two days in the future, the bunny men go to bed and I collect the spoils. I use these bat wings the same way and yes, I do get meatballs, so this is an acceptable food source for me, which I can consider in the future now. I make a new chest because antlion is a boss I'm not really good at. I need to be well prepared with everything I can muster. So day 51, I start by making an endothermic fire. It's the same as a normal fire, except it does the opposite. It cools you down for summer. I make an extra thermal stone because I need it for the fight as well. Also, it's another full moon. Those nine blue gems, they're inside Chester, and he transforms. So does the pigs, of course. So the next morning, look at Chester. He's actually a fridge now, a mobile fridge. So when I need to stay cool in summer, he can carry my thermo stones. I have another hound wave and I make a nasty discovery. Oh shit. Oh shit, that's bad. Okay, um, you know what? That's perfectly fine. I think we're gonna see if we can get that sorted. Hello, puppy dogs. Okay, so he's... Okay, that is an amazing one. Ow. After this giant plant with eyes deals with the hounds, I deal with it. This thing spawns randomly where you have been on the map. Day 54, as time really flies in this game, I find another one. I then move east and get rid of some beehives, because I want to be able to make some bee houses soon with the resources, but also because I want to set up a permanent tree farm. Of course, as I plant them, I get struck by lightning and burn a good portion of the trees down. Oh, you're joking me! Oh no! <laughs> that goes all the trees. You f <laughs> Okay, fair enough game. Luckily, not all of them because of the rain. It's the final day of spring and I have my last preparation to think about for antlion. I make some good honey hams because they are an amazing food source. Day 56, the first of summer. There is something I must do quickly. I need to make fashion goggles because I need them for another blueprint. Shortly later, a sandstorm hits and this pond magically fills up with water. I then spend quite a bit of time fishing because I'm looking for a blueprint to make desert goggles so that I can see in a sandstorm and I can move around at normal speed then. This oasis biome is my home and with the sandstorm it will always hinder my movement. I fish for an entire day. I break the rod and no, I don't get the goggle blueprints. Damn it. And you know what? Antlion is waiting for me. I need to engage him or he starts ruining the world with earth tremors. It's now or never. I take Chester and blindly venture into the storm looking for Antlion. I find him, he's here on the minimap, but I must wait till dawn before engaging him. Day 58. The time has come. I must defeat Antlion now. I have all I can muster. I'm slow and I can't help that. I feed him a cold thermal stone and the battle begins. Alright, sweet. Oh, come on. Oh, son of a bitch. Ruined here. I'm getting ruined. Ah, oh, me, man. Can you cut it out, you son of a bitch? Oh, seriously, man. I 
can't move you. Ah. No. Oh my god, I can't get out. You f Fifty-eight days survived for being murdered by Antlion. I am not prepared well enough for this fight. I got a little bit of practice, but some main points. I lacked those goggles, so I couldn't run fast and I needed speed to kill this guy. Maybe some more health food, using my screen tilts more effectively to see what's going on, and moving prematurely to dodge his attacks. This fight, it's hard because you have to keep moving and these pillars block you and your vision. If you would like to see me try again to survive 100 days without dying on a fresh server, let me know by hitting that like button. Leave a comment down below with some friendly advice as I'm still a noob at this game. And as always, one for all and all for one. Cheers Musketeers.